At 18 years old, a girl who still plays with dolls is crowned and will become the grimmer of Europe. The crown looks wobbly on Victoria's head, who is less than 5 feet tall. Even the coronation robes she wears seem baggy. Yet a little body often harbors a great soul. With her unique statesmanship, Queen Victoria launched a 64-year reign that brought Britain into the period of the empire on which the sun never sets. Of course, such a girl would also have an extraordinary romance. In 1837, the sound of horse hooves in the morning fog delivered the news that King William IV had died, and his niece Victoria, who had to sleep with her dolls, became the new queen of the United Kingdom. Everyone sees the new Victoria as a weakling, and they are all eager to take her place. Even her own mother, the Prime Minister, far away in London, was agitated and rode hurriedly to Kensington Palace, where the Queen lived. Her mother and her lover, Sir John, had already begun to make moves to take control of her. They arrived in Victoria's room, as soon as they learned it of the King's death, and condescended to boss her around. I suppose the first thing to decide is how you will style yourself. Sir John then pointed out that her name was DeForan and needed to be changed to a traditional one, as if he was the one who was going to be crowned king. And then, he did even more to challenge the throne, when Victoria offered to meet all the ministers on her own. This is not a game! In future, you must be accompanied by your mother or me. He reprimanded as if he were talking to a subordinate. Since Victoria was chosen to be crowned queen, she's lived in the darkness of their control. They've set up the Kensington system to keep a watchful eye on her actions and behavior, and to keep her in isolation. They wanted Victoria to be weak and dependent on them. Victoria wanted to get out of that life. She wanted to live her life the way she liked. So as soon as she became queen, she made her governess her royal housekeeper and asked her to help with all the royal business. And then she received Prime Minister Lord Melbourne on her own. Lord Melbourne offered to be her private secretary to the young queen. But the newly crowned Victoria was very cautious. After all, Lord Melbourne and Sir John's private exchange of views were all in Victoria's eyes. So Victoria didn't hesitate to turn down his request and said that if she really needed help, she'd ask for it. But these challenges were barely child's play compared to what she was about to encounter. Victoria has a powerful uncle, Cumberland. Cumberland scorns the idea of this small girl's succession. If she died in an accident, he'd be on his way to the throne. During the Queen's first meeting with the ministers, young Victoria seemed slightly flustered and ended up speaking in a low voice. Uncle Cumberland took the opportunity to mock her. The girl's panic is compounded by her embarrassment. When she looked down at the ministers, it was Lord Melbourne's reassuring smile that gave her the courage to carry on with this important meeting. By the time, she was well into the second part of the meeting, the swearing in. One by one, the ministers came to her knees and swore allegiance to the Queen. But again, Victoria didn't know the names of the ministers or what to call them. The next moment, Lord Melbourne descended upon her like an angel and whispered the names of the earls, viscounts and lords in her ear. All the while the two of them were working together to make the Queen's audience with her ministers a success. Afterwards, with a skillful organization of the proceedings, Victoria made her way steadily to the balcony for a friendly first meeting and interaction with her people who had been waiting downstairs. Lord Melbourne's act of kindness also won Queen Victoria's favor. So Victoria gave him the appointment just as she had told him she would. Lord Melbourne, when we first met, you offered to act as my private secretary, but you are still willing. I would be honored, ma'am. From then on, the company of Lord Melbourne, as said, middle-aged man, became a dream that the young Victoria never wanted to wake up from. The man Victoria trusted so much would patiently lead her into the world of politics and make her a true queen. And the one thing that touched her most was that he would never laugh at her height. The girl who sits in the throne seat of her predecessor, with her feet dangling six inches in the air, is the newly crowned Queen Victoria. Being less than five feet tall, she had to have special utensils for her coronation. But that didn't dampen Victoria's good mood. Accompanied by her ladies in waiting, she made her way solemnly to Westminster Abbey. She then changed into her golden robes before the priest placed her coronation ring on her finger. Victoria held the scepter, the symbol of power, in both hands, and then she put on the jewel crown. The crown, which began to shake with every movement of her head, seemed to foretell her impending fate. The sunlight that penetrated the clouds when the door was open seemed to indicate that the girl's future was bright and clear. Victoria then moved to Buckingham Palace and Saturday in the chair left behind by the former king. According to her past life experience, anyone who saw her would have laughed at her, but she didn't expect Lord Melbourne to not only laugh at her, but to say, quite frankly, we need to find a suitable size throne before you make your debut. By giving her advice and not forcing her to accept it, he fulfills Victoria's fantasies of a man she is attracted to, or rather her fantasies of a father. Lord Melbourne also quickly helped Victoria into her role as queen. However, there are a few men like him who don't have ulterior motives. Everyone treated Queen Victoria like a child. The ladies-in-waiting and servants 
took advantage of the opportunity to sell court goods for extra money. Queen Victoria's once worn gloves were sold by tailors at exorbitant prices. The candles on the crystal lamps were sold by the servants, and fresh tapers were lit every night. The royal assets were consumed like water in a cycle of wastefulness. To add insult to injury, in order to make more money, the servants even replaced beeswax candles with poor quality tallow, which gave off a strange odor when lit. Tonight is Queen Victoria's coronation ball, and all the royals are dressed to the nines. However, when the poorly constructed tallows were lit, they started dripping wax while on their shoulders, leaving them in a terrible state of disarray. His Royal Highness, Prince Alexander of Russia, bowed down and asked Queen Victoria to dance. So the two of them took to the center of the dance floor, hand in hand, and danced to the joyous music. But as they danced, something went wrong. Alexander's hand crept down to try and touch Queen Victoria's butt. While everyone was watching to see what would happen next, Lord Melbourne came to her side again and grabbed the Queen by the waist and danced. He then relieved her of the situation without making a move, which made the young Queen feel even more favorable towards him. Queen Victoria is attracted to a man who is old enough to be your father. Dance so well. I wish I could dance with you every night. You're very young. Lord Melbourne's cryptic remark changed the subject, thus keeping Victoria from dwelling on the issue. After the song ended, however, she drank glass after glass of champagne. Victoria's behavior caught her mother's attention, and she immediately summoned her lady and wing, Lady Flora, to admonish Victoria on her etiquette. But the tipsy girl had forgotten where she was and who she was surrounded by. Mama sent you to tell me what to do. Queen Victoria's unruly behavior attracted immediate attention. And when she was completely helpless, Lord Melbourne reappeared to save the day. Ma'am, it's really hot in here. Perhaps we should take a walk out of the balcony. How could such an understanding and elegant man not be a hit with a young girl's fancy? Victoria's housekeeper, Lesson, makes a new discovery when Lady Flora's growing belly leads her to suspect that she and Sir John are having an affair. So Lesson rushed to tell the Queen about her discovery. Victoria was not so calm when she saw Lady Flora's bulging belly. She had long wanted her mother to be free of Sir John's control, so she told her mother what she suspected. But Duchess of Kent didn't believe her. At her wit's end, Victoria came up with a bad idea. She called for a male doctor to examine Lady Flora's body and chastity. But Queen Victoria's reckless behavior also personally gave her rivals an advantage and nearly caused her crown to fall from her head. Lord Melbourne tried unsuccessfully to dissuade her from her madness, 